Hey, welcome back to another RC Wars video. Today we're going to be walking you through a pretty exciting topic. Uh, what is inside of your submersible well pump or this submersible well pump actually? So we're going to go ahead and kick things off. We're going to do a two part video because it might get a little long otherwise. So we're going to go ahead and tear into the motor and then see what's in there. And then also after that, we're going to tear into the pump end and as we go through and, and take the parts out from the motor and the pump and so forth, we're gonna discuss kind of how those parts are affected and uh, what kinds of things can impact the life of those parts and so forth. So it should be pretty exciting. Stay tuned and uh, we'll get going. Okay, so we've got our motor up in the vise here. I went ahead and just cut the lead off so that wasn't in the way. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you do put a motor in a vise, um, make sure you try actually to avoid it because the, the midsection of the motor is kind of squishy. There's not a lot of reinforcement to it. You basically just got this thin outer steel and then the winding, which we're gonna see all of that here in a moment. So anyways, we're gonna start removing all of the fittings on the outside or the screws. So we've got a, three screws in the bottom that are holding this cap in place. And then we've got the uh, nuts on top. So the first thing that's going on is this little hole right here is what allows water um, to, to regulate. So this motor is filled, from the factory it's filled with a glycol water mixture, uh, but over time that mixture tends to go to just water uh, because the gly glycol's in there to prevent freezing, but once the pump or motor is in the well, freezing is typically not a concern due to assumed depth, um, and it simply just replaces it with glycol, self-regulates and so forth. Um, to lubricate a lot of the components, mainly the, uh, the thrust bearing is water lubricated. So here we've got a section of the diaphragm where we've got some liquid. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna remove is gonna be the screws that you use to uh, secure the pump end to the motor. Um, I've got a number number nine wrench here and so those come out looking just like that so they're threaded on both sides obviously one side so that you can put the nut on to secure the motor or the pump in place to the motor and then the other side threads into the to the motor just like so and now this motor isn't going to be just simply unbolt it um, and take it apart these are a sealed motor epoxy potted uh, so we're gonna have to do some cutting to get this thing open, but I just wanted to get these out of the way to minimize resistance. All right, so we went ahead and removed the power plug uh, by removing the compression nut as seen here. And now that there's nothing really securing this in place right here, it just will spin all over the place. We can pull this whole section out and we get all kinds of goodies with it. So we've got the top section of the motor and then here, oh, We've got a few pieces. This appears to be a bearing or a seal. So we've got a bunch of what appear to be spacers or shims right here. And so those were situated right here on the bottom of the rotor. And then this carbon piece here was on there just like that. And then it looks like there are a bunch of small holes in each one of these. And so they line up with these pins that are on the rotor. And I imagine that they make this to some spec and then they add enough of these accordingly to get the proper spacing and distancing. And then this sits on here just like so. And that provides a, a bearing of sorts. It's kind of cool. 
Kind of like unwrapping a present with this motor because I've never actually taken one of these apart myself and I thought it'd be cool to film the first time. And I noticed while we were kind of monkeying with it that this was kind of loose. So I want to see if we can get this out. Now it's in there pretty good. Can I get behind it? There we go. Okay. So now we've got the bottom section which the shaft, so we've got a channel in there, so that shaft would ride right in there just like so. Oh, we might be, have the other portion of the, ah, we found the thrust bearing, cool. So this is the legendary, let me get all the pieces, Kingsbury thrust bearing. We're missing a piece. So this is probably the coolest part of the Franklin Electric motor. Um, so here was that upper bearing, that ceramic that we talked about. And then here's the, this is the thrust bearing setup. Now somehow, somewhere we lost the other uh, piece of this. There's normally three of these little guys that sit. Now they just sit inside of this channel here. And they're, they're only hanging on by those little tiny legs. Hopefully you can see those tiny little legs. Um, and so up thrust, of course, as we've talked about is a major issue because if you have your impellers lifting and these lift up far enough that one of the legs skips out, then your thrust bearings out of socket and your motor is gonna be just destroyed in a very short period of time. But this bearing is water lubricated and that's why these motors are water filled, primarily to lubricate this bearing. And this ceramic just rides, or uh, the carbon, I think that's carbon, um, just rides on top of this here. And um, it's water lubricated, so it has a thin film of water. I think, it's, I think that when I went to my Franklin Electric training, they said it's like one micron thick of, of water that just rides in between these, and it, it sucks up more water for lubrication in between, and that's why there's so much space in between where these are at. And then this rotates, of course, and supports all of the thrust that the motor's pushing up. And these thrust bearings are nothing to joke about. These things can take a ton, a ton of force. I mean, you think about, uh, let's say a five horsepower submersible that's gonna have a thrust bearing just like this, and it can put out, I don't know, maybe two, 300 PSI. That's a lot of pressure bearing down on this thing. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's kind of a, a, a marvel of engineering and this is one of the things that really separates some of the Franklin Electric motors from other manufacturers. Um, at least is my understanding. I don't think that all other manufacturers run a similar thrust bearing. I could be wrong and I'm open for people to prove me wrong. Um, I never claim to be right though. So, But anyways, um, that's a pretty cool piece and it's kind of got this interesting almost scary design where the thrust bearing sits on top of this other piece that's similar in size, but then they're lined up with this kind of little ball type deal. Now I would imagine maybe it's that way to allow for some slippage to occur and then to allow the motor or the thrust bearing to realign itself. Um, I'm really curious to know why they do it that way, but it's got these little knobs on the underside of this one and then some knobs here that that all lines up real nice and neat. So that's pretty cool, Franklin Electric thrust bearing. And I really wanna find the other piece of this. And I think that the material that this is is just a really, I would imagine it's stainless because we have no rusting or anything occurring. Let's see if I can get this open. without cutting my hand. There we go. So now all we've got basically is the stator with the windings. So you got a winding here and a winding here. 
you guys don't believe me, we could bash on a little bit and expose some of it. But other than that, there's not much really going on here. I think that this is all uh, epoxy material that probably, I mean, it's pretty durable, but it's clearly not like a ceramic. That would just break in chunks. It's kind of a, a chalky plastic type material. It's, I definitely can't even scratch it with my thumbnail. Um, I cut a little bit extra deep along these parts and I can see a little bit of the copper winding exposed here and a little bit of the copper winding exposed here as well. Um, I imagine that the main reason that they uh, coat the windings in this epoxy is to have a little bit more control um, over the winding positions and better insulate them so that they fail more predictably. But I think that the downside is they probably have more cooling required than a motor that would just be open um, and the windings would be exposed. So it's kind of a trade-off of longevity as long as you can do the cooling. All right, well, we found out what is inside of a submersible motor. We talked about uh, the thrust bearing, which obviously I was pretty excited about. That's kind of the big deal with Franklin Electric Motors. They have some other built-in functionality that's pretty cool too. I talk about that in some of my other videos. So up next, we're gonna take apart a pump end and kind of relate that to the parts that we saw here. Um, so stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content, and we will catch you next time. I need to wash up.